my croquettes. Today we're going to be making pollo milanese. Now this is an Italian dish. Um, it's very nice. Okay, so what you're going to need is there is a whole a range of stuff. Right, I made fresh bread, um, but you can use a shop bought um, bread. Um, it's around three slices that you're going to need. I've used brown bread, but you can use white bread. That's no problem. And in there, I've put a lemon, some basil, and some thyme. I've whisked it all together in a blender and it's made these lovely. Okay, so what you need is 60 grams of Gruyere cheese, uh, some creme fraiche, some garlic, about three cloves of garlic, um, some stock, beef stock, which is about 300, um, some jacket potatoes, which are already done because this is going to make your mash, I will show you in a bit. Uh, two chicken breasts, some corn flour and some eggs and some olive oil and some rapeseed oil. Okay, so what I'm going to show you to start with is what I've actually got in the oven. Now, um, I started roasting mine just a little while ago because I thought it would start help, helping the process really. But it probably needs a little bit longer. Okay, so in here I've put two shallots, uh, de de put all the seeds out of it and some thyme, some basil, some leeks and the garlic. The reason why I've left the garlic in here is because when it cooks it makes it a lot softer, it makes it a mellow flavour so you can just pop it out once it's done. So okay I'm going to put that back in there so that we can get that done. This is going to make the sauce for the milanese. Okay so that's all in for you. Okay so let's have a look. Now the first thing I'm going to do, what do I always say my coquettes? Put the stuff that will make you ill back in the fridge because if you don't you're going to get ill it's not the nicest of things I must admit okay so let's put this all back in here okay so the beef stock is for later so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop it over here now I've used pickle of tomatoes which means they're a smaller sweeter tomato um, I've used 220 grams on that one so indeed so we'll just pop that over there because we don't need that anymore okay your corn flour is for when you're going to coat your chicken so we'll just keep that for the moment I've also got some locked bags I'm going to put my chicken in this so that I can shake it in a bit and you'll see how it goes because also when you're banging it if you put it in clean film it tends to just shoot out the end so okay so what we're going to do is we're just going to put our jacket potatoes on just for the moment and we will Okay, so I'm just taking this out of the oven. This has been in for 20 to 30 minutes. Um, as you can see now, it's all really nice and cooked down. Um, all your garlic cloves should be nice and soft. I'm just going to put it over here for a second because what I want it to do is I want it to cool. Because I'm going to put it in the blender. And if I put it straight into the blender before it cools down a little, it explodes all over the kitchen as Gary has found out. Um, he came in one day to find everything just all over the place. Now, I'm going to put, um, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but rather than putting a bit of wine in it sometimes, I like to put a little bit of balsamic vinegar in it. It gives a bit more of a kick to the sauce without you having to put anything alcoholic in. It's much lighter as well and fresher. So just pop that in there. Give it a mix. Okay, so I put this on 200 degrees. You can put it up to 220 if you want to, but you really need to keep an eye on it because obviously it's going to cook a lot quicker. Right, so my jacket potatoes are literally just about to come out of the microwave. This is what we're going to do to make the, make the mash. I'm going to leave my oven on, but I'm going to turn it down to just under 200. Just under 200. So what you want to do is you want to open your potatoes. I'm going to scoop all that out. Now I'm using creme fraiche. If you feel you want to use cream, you're more than welcome to use cream. Um, but remember, with the cream, it isn't as thick, so your potatoes can go very, not watery, but very loose within an instant. So if you're putting any in, I would say put a little bit in at a time. Just give it a little bit more of a, a rest to 
to take that in as well. Um, right, let's put that in there. Now these are very hot, so please be careful. I've got almost asbestos hands, not quite. They do get a bit, a bit overheated sometimes as well. Okay, so you want to try and get as much out of the potato as you can. I mean, obviously not all the time you can, but if you can do it, that's great. I mean, if there's some that's left on the plate, just pop it in. I mean, I've got a little bit of... There's my beef ago. Okay, so I took mine out a little bit earlier, my tomatoes, because I can tell when my tomatoes need doing and when, they're, and when they are done. So, but as for you, if you feel like they're not done yet please leave them in the oven it doesn't really matter because you want them to go down anyway into a nice sauce so um so even if you do leave it for a little bit longer it doesn't really matter because you want to get them as down as you can so right I'll get these ones out okay okay so all my potatoes are out of their skins now so i'm just going to open the creme fresh that there for a second and um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to season a little with some pepper okay now I use the microwave um, potatoes because the microwave potatoes not only are they quick but also they give a lot of um, they're quite easy and they, they go quite um, fluffy for you to do mash i don't know why but they seem to be the best from what i've tried so far so what i did set like i said before just put a tiny bit in to start with and see how you get on um i'm going to put my cheese in because we're making a cheesy mash okay and just start mashing mash 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 um because i found sometimes when you're trying to do mash yourself um from normal potatoes, they just go all um, hard and and like little bumpy. But this way, it doesn't. It, it turns out really nice. So um, just keep adding your cheese a little at a time because you want to mix it all in as well. So you're going to have a good mix in a bit anyway. But um, I mean, if you if you don't like Gruyere cheese, um, please swap it for cheddar. Uh, anything you like. I mean, if you don't even like creme fraiche, um, you can put dairy leaf slices in as well, and that makes it just just as mashy, just as lovely as anything else. In fact, it gives it a bit more of a mashy flavour. So I'm just going to put that back in. That's that. Now I think mine needs a bit more creme fraiche, so I'm going to put all of my creme fraiche in to mine and. Okay, so we'll put that there. I'm just going to put the light on because it's getting a bit dark now. Okay. You need some good arms for these ones, strong. Because making mash is difficult. So you don't need weedy arms. I mean, normally, I might get Gary to help me with this, to be honest, but... Gary's on camera, so Gary can't do this. Leanna needs to use her arms of cooking with Yanni. Right, now I'm going to give mine a little bit of a taste. So, mmm, that's perfect. It's really nice. I like a bit more pepper in mine, so I'm going to do a bit more pepper. Season, season, and more season. Okay, so I'm going to put mine like that. Oh, it is getting hot in this kitchen. Okay, so I'm going to mix that. Like that. And that's your cheesy mash done. Ooh, nice and ready for later. Now, I'm going to pop mine in the microwave because um, I'm going to put mine in a little bit. So I might as well put, put it in there for the moment. Nice and warm from where the others have been. 
Okay, so now what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you how to do these garlic cloves. So take your garlic cloves out. Uh, should be another one in there somewhere hiding. It won't come out. I put um, four garlic cloves in here. Once again, I love my garlic. If you don't like garlic, that's fine. Don't pop it in. But it does give a really nice flavour to the sauce. And um, once you do it like this, the whole garlicky flavour changes. It goes to a more mellower flavour. So you don't have to worry too much um, about the garlic. If you really don't like garlic, it, it actually is quite nicer. So I'm um, just going to put that in there. And that one in there. So just squeeze it out. Pop. There we go. Okay, so these are going to go into our sauce. I've put a, half of the stock in here. So I'm going to pop that in there, like that. Okay, and then I am going to get a spoon and try and get this into here. Now, I'm using my, my mixer because it's, it's fantastic. It's so easy to do, rather than mucking around and trying to do it with a hand blender. But if, if that's the only thing that you have got to hand, then use the hand blender, that's no problem. It's just that I'm a little bit, little bit more lazier, let's say. If it can do it for me, fantastic. Okay, so pop that in there. Okay, so I've used um, a beef stock, but if you don't fancy a beef stock, you can use chicken or you can use a vegetarian one. Personally, I like the beef stock. Because the beef stock does give it a lot of more flavour um, than some of the others. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour that in there. Yeah. What I'm going to do as well is I'm going to just put all these juices, all these lovely juices. You don't want to leave them behind. So pop them all in. Yeah. Looking good, Gary? Yeah. Okay. So, I'm going to pop my blender on. Okay, so, that's that done. So I'm going to put a tiny bit of the corn flour in here. Um, only because it will thicken it up later on. So I'm going to put a tiny bit in. And then we are going to pour a tiny bit in. Oh, look at that. Now this is an, a classic Italian sauce. No bells, no whistles, just good flavouring, which everybody likes. So make sure you mix that in. I'm going to put it on the hob later so it will thicken a little bit more. Okay, so I'm going to pull that all in there. All of it. Don't be shy. Come on. Out you go. My little sauce. Okay, so there is your sauce done. Perfect. So leave that to the side. And then in a minute. Okay, so I've taken my chickens out of the oven. Uh, my soup, my sauce is done. My potatoes are done. So now we're going to man it. Okay, so this is so that you can make it into an escalop. It's an Italian escalop, basically. So you want to thin out as much as you can because you want it thin. Now I put it in these bags because it's so much easier to do it then having it all over the place so it might take a little while to do but once again strong arms we are women we are strong okay so you can see it's probably the thickness of about about a two pence piece I would say okay so we've got the next one to do because obviously poor Gary 
he has to eat at some point as well so you'll see as well how large the breast becomes as well it's a lot bigger once it starts to be patted down or slammed down really I never use this side um, I think it makes the meat too um, too thin and it gives it that horrible texture as well whilst when you're using this side it's a lot better so we're going to try and bash this one out a bit as well okay make sure you take all the air out of the bag as well it's not not great okay so um what we're going to do is we're going to add a tiny bit of corn flour in here tiny bit of corn flour in there shake it up Okay, and you want to do the same to this one as well. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to dip, dip and bread. That's what we like to do. So, put that there. I mean, you can season this if you want to, the chicken. Um, I know I say a lot of seasoning, but there's loads of seasoning in, in the breadcrumbs. So I don't think you're really going to need it too much. So, give it a shake. Make sure, try and make sure that it's kind of fully covered because when you pop it into the egg you want it to stick so right, let's get bread in now what I'm going to do as well is I've got a light olive oil spray I'm going to quickly spray the bottom of my um, baking tray just so that when it goes on it cooks the bottom as well a bit um, so let's just do that mm -hmm. These are new Ziploc bags, so I'm getting used to these ones actually. But they are handy, they really are handy, and then you can just throw them away. Fantastic, that's what we like. Okay, so we're going to dip the chicken into there, and then we're going to dip it into here. Now, I have no alternatives if you're allergic to egg, I'm really sorry. Or, but you can do gluten-free bread if you are allergic to... Um, to gluten then you can use gluten free um, it probably tastes but probably just as good to be honest as it would this because um, once you do that you can put that on there I like mine all covered so I'm gonna pressy press a little bit more okay so the next one Oh, it's so exciting. Okay, so you're going to dip again. Dippy dip. If you feel that you need to dip again and dip back into the breadcrumbs, go ahead. Um, I feel once is normally good enough, really. You've just got to pat it on. That's all. Be a bit more ruthless with your breadcrumbs. Now, um, using these breadcrumbs as well, I'm going to do them in a later one, but you can also do this kind of thing for chicken nuggets as well. It's a really good idea. Um, and tasty. And there we go. There's the next one. Okay, so I'm going to go and wash my hands because um, not only have I handled raw egg, I've handled raw chicken as well, which isn't the best thing to be touching. So you've got that done what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray a little bit with olive oil over the top because I find if you drizzle too much of um, rapeseed oil over the top it will make it it, it won't it won't do it very well it, it will um, just take all the breadcrumbs off so I'm just going to give it a bit of like that okay so you're looking around 20 minutes for this please do always check that your, kick, that your chicken is cooked uh, you can slice it, um, but you can always make sure it's cooked because you'll just get really ill. Okay, so my little beauties are going in the oven, so I'm going to say cook, my little beauties, cook. And in they go. Okay, so I am going to be back in 20 to 30 minutes. So I set my timer on. Okay, see you in a bit. Bye, cats. Okay, hi, my good cats. We're back again. Right. This has been in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, our sauce is on the go, it's warming up. 
and our pota mashed potatoes are in the microwave doing. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that this sauce is nice and hot, which it is now. Um, I don't think I said how, what temperature to put the um, to put the melanzano in. Um, put it in at 200 degrees at the most, okay? Because normally anything with chicken or anything like that needs 200 degrees. So I'm just going to take this off a sec because as you see it's lovely and boiling. And I'm just going to get the mash out and get it out. So my mash is nice and done. Right there a second. Give it a good stir. Oh, I can see the cheesiness. Okay, so get your spoon. If you want to kind of do it poshly, you can do it like this. It's not the, it's not the best. It's called quenelling, but I can't do it very well. But um, there goes our people. That's sweating. Okay, so put your mash there. I'm just doing a little bit at the moment just to so you can see how it looks on the plate. Okay, so I'm gonna pour my sauce into here. It's lovely and boiling now. Whoa! Okay, if I turn that off and if I can find my oven gloves. Da 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 da! Whoa! I like that, that's what they do in game shows, so I like it. And we need. Ah, oh, there it is. Okay, so. Give it your. That's it, pop it on top. Pop it on top. I mean, you want to get a little spoon. Pop it over the top. You don't want too much sauce on it because if you have too much sauce on it, it um, it makes the breadcrumbs go all manky. Okay. And there you go, there's your polo melanzano. Yay! Right, okay, that's everything today, my coquettes. Please subscribe, please like the video, and we'd love to see you on our Facebook page or our YouTube. Okay, bye for now, coquettes.